finding the voices. Talk show by Monica Ibudam. I'm a huge fan of finding the voices. You're doing a great job. Manipur. Manipur, you can make those voices and you know, make those voices more visible. Yeah, yeah. Our voice to reach in all the corners of the world. Interesting people. In finding the finding voices on people from our own place. So if the guy na interest so if I share positive stories and inspiring stories and bring all the good stories of Manipur. Finding the voices. Welcome to Finding the Voices. Right now, I am at Caesar Hospital, and we have a very special guest, Dr. Sorokhaibam Jugindra, who is the medical superintendent here. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you, Mani. Uh, first of all, if you can please share about your childhood and introduce us about um, your family. I was uh, third of uh, three siblings. Mm -hmm. My eldest is uh, our sister and I have an elder brother. I am the youngest. We were born to uh, my father who is actually a laboratory technician in the army and now retired. Okay and uh, my mother who was a housewife. So uh, during our childhood we were staying with father who since he was in the army used to be posted in different places in India. Mm -hmm. So we moved around with him and uh, our schooling and learning was in different places of India. So we have stayed in many places of India depending on his postings at that time. And uh, that's how we are able to see uh, many pockets of India, see many people, and uh, interact with many languages, many customs. And uh, that's how we have grown. And then later, uh, my elder sister became a doctor. Mm -hmm. My brother became a drugs inspector in the Manipur State Health Department. Mm -hmm. And I became a surgeon. Okay, so all in the medical field. All in the medical field, yes. So how did you get inspired to be in the medical field? When the story is that uh, he was uh, 11th of 12 children. Oh, okay. And uh, as in that, uh, in his times when he was uh, adolescent and getting mm -hmm. uh, just adult, mm -hmm. the family situation was uh, that uh, there were too many siblings and too many children. So, so a lot of financial and constraints. And, uh, yeah, the once he joined the army, he chose the medical field. Okay. So uh, after his basic army training, he then became a nursing assistant. From there, he was he went to AFMC Pune and uh, learned laboratory technician. Okay. So that's why, uh, being a laboratory technician, he was posted in hospitals uh, mm -hmm. all across the country. Mm -hmm. So we were staying ar around hospitals all the time. Our quarters were around the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And as children, we played in most of the hospitals, okay. army hospitals. Okay. So uh, seeing uh, hospitals and uh, uh, being in a family where father was in the laboratory mm -hmm. and doing most of my homework in his laboratory, uh, <laughs> because he used to take me there and mm -hmm. then we used to uh, sit there and do homework there. Mm -hmm. So that's how we were uh, influenced exposed. And yeah, exposed. Influenced, uh, mm -hmm. uh, from right from childhood, uh, somehow I thought that I will become a doctor. Okay. And uh, doctor to me was a surgeon. Okay. At that time, I didn't know, know that the there specification yeah, and yes. specialization. There are so of many different, different uh, yeah. uh, doctors of different kinds are there. Mm -hmm. I thought that a doctor is a surgeon, and you have to become a surgeon. And that's okay. how that got stuck in my mind, mm -hmm. and I aimed to become a surgeon. Okay. And that's how I became. Okay. So, uh, can you share a little bit about your education? Most of my uh, schooling was in convent schools. Oh, okay. So, of course, uh, it started, uh, first schooling probably 
would be in uh, Wankai, mm -hmm. uh, in the Balwadi school. Okay. And I still remember going to uh, classes with uh, a sack and a slate. With okay, the, during with those times. Yes, yes. So we just had to uh, that uh, to sit on uh, mm. a sack and one slate. And that is how I remember uh, going to school, the first school that I went to. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, uh, my father was posted in different places and we moved. So the next I remember was uh, going to a place called um, Bareilly. From there we went to Kamti, that mm -hmm. is near Nagpur. Mm -hmm. And I studied till class two uh, there. Okay. So uh, that was uh, in Maharashtra, Kamti mm -hmm. is in Maharashtra. And uh, uh, that was again a common school. Okay. From there we moved to Pune and uh, in St. Patrick's uh, School in Pune, again a convent school. Uh, I studied there until class uh, 5. And from class 6 uh, to class 9, I was in Kolkata again. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was in St. Thomas' School. And from class 10 onwards, uh, class 10, I uh, gave my uh, metric uh, exam, class 10, in uh, Roorkee. Okay. That, that was then UP, but now in Uttaranja. Mm -hmm. uh, so after that, I joined center school for my class 11 and 12, mm -hmm. and then finished my class 12 in Roorkee. And after finishing uh, class 12, I appeared for the uh, MBBS selection, okay. and got selected and went to Kerala for okay. MBBS. So after MBBS, I mm, came back here and worked here for some time. Mm -hmm. and went back again to complete my post-graduation in surgery here? in Kerala again. No, no, where did you work in Manipur at that time? Yeah, uh, after internship, uh, that is after MBBS, we do a uh, one-year uh, mm -hmm. compulsory internship. Mm -hmm. That was in Kerala itself. Okay. After coming here, I joined the RIMS uh, okay. for a uh, house job. We call the house mm -hmm. job post in surgery department. Mm -hmm. That was uh, for over uh, more than a year, mm -hmm. one year, three months, I was there in surgery department. Uh, then I was uh, uh, I was in involved in setting up the then Shijak clinic, mm -hmm. so with uh, Dr. Palin and my sister Dr. Boni. Okay. So we started uh, uh, the roots of uh, Shijak clinic. At okay. That time. Okay. Then I went back to uh, Kerala again to mm -hmm. complete my post graduation in mm -hmm. surgery, in okay. general surgery. Mm -hmm. Dr. Palin himself had started a small clinic uh, in Pongna Bazar in 1985. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I joined and we were uh, developing to make a place where patients can stay mm -hmm. and we could do some operations, that was in some uh, in eighty nine. Okay. From then on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's been a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been quite some time. So before we dive into your uh, career, since I just had a question about your um, childhood and growing up in terms of moving around and having your education in different parts of India. Um, nowadays, we hear that there are racial discrimination and, um, you know, the news highlight that. So what has been your experience in those times? Yeah, definitely. Uh, our feature mm -hmm. was different from uh, the other children in the uh, class. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the children most of the time were confused whether we are <laughs> Nepali or okay. uh, some used to think China and mm -hmm. some used to think otherwise. Uh, but most often they used to think we are Nepali okay. because uh, we were then speaking Hindi also and uh, mm, so they thought uh, and they used to call us uh, uh, Nepali Daju, mm -hmm. very common. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, of course, uh, we didn't go about clearing their doubts or anything at that time mm -hmm. and uh, we used to tell them that uh, we are from uh, Manipur in the northeast and many children asked very uh, strange questions we thought strange at that time uh, for instance uh, they used to ask us uh, do you have cycles in manipur mm. uh, so it was very st strange for them that uh, we could ride a cycle in manipur they used mm -hmm. to think that uh, northeast are all hills and mm -hmm. uh, it is so up and down that uh, nobody can ride a cycle or anything like that okay and so we had to there do is a, lot a of lack of knowledge and yeah, they exactly. don't know anything about Manipur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we, we had to explain that it is not only that we have valley and uh, it's totally flat. Uh, in, s in some places, uh, like the one in Kerala where I did my uh, MBBS and 
MS, mm -hmm. it is much more hilly than what uh, Manipur or Imphal, mm. particularly. So even there, they could not imagine that we are riding cycle and uh, it is okay. so plain. Okay, so this is during your college time. College time. Okay, so even then, like there was yeah, lack of then. awareness, exactly. and exactly. I see, yeah. I see. But did you uh, yeah. like what was your um, way of reacting? Like, did did you feel bad or? Yeah, there, there were some of my friends uh, who were conscious and aware, and uh, they used to ask uh, questions: uh, Why there is so much? Uh, uh, bad feelings in the people in the northeast mm -hmm. and uh, why they are reacting so much and uh, all that. so uh, this was in college day right and i used to explain uh, see people are otherwise other parts of uh, the country they are not much aware mm -hmm. and they are not interested mm -hmm. so one day we were just simply discussing that then my friend he said no 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 we are interested we know mm. about uh, this in uh, northeast and we as we were discussing another friend uh, 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 classmate rather he mm -hmm. came and uh, we were discussing about this thing. Then suddenly that, uh, that uh, uh, classmate, uh, he asked, uh, how do you do all these things in your country? Okay. Then I, I was able to tell the other friend, look, here right. is a fellow who has come to <laughs> study MBBS and he is considering me a separate countryman mm. uh, from a different country. And mm -hmm. this is what exactly I was trying to tell you mm -hmm. about uh, awareness in the other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. So yes, we used to discuss and we used to clarify uh, their doubts and such things uh, mm -hmm. in those times. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, I have had no such uh, uh, events or incidences where we were treated extremely badly. Mm -hmm. Mostly we could gel well with uh, people mm -hmm. wherever we stayed. And yeah, I think it's more the lack of awareness yes. from their side and to a certain extent they don't know because they haven't yeah, learned about fault. the place so it's, it's not, not really it's not their fault right it is not in the curriculum the mm -hmm. people don't uh, make them uh, learn it and it's not their uh, uh, personal fault that mm -hmm. uh, they don't know about that i don't know so many right. things about so many places uh, in the country even in my own state mm -hmm. i wouldn't be knowing so many things about uh, uh, my own state mm -hmm. so uh, I, I can't expect that uh, mm -hmm. from everybody mm -hmm. so i think it's uh, Sometimes uh, we have to accept that it is okay. Mm -hmm. So yes. coming back to you becoming a surgeon, when you dived into the subject, like was it what you really wanted? And if you can share a little bit of your initial exploratory and yeah. learning phase. So uh, when I had to do anything with surgery, then I was totally uh, engrossed. And it, I, I used to, uh, I mean, I, I used to forget everything else. Mm. It was, it was uh, so much uh, my fascination to be able to do surgery and then uh, treat people like that. So uh, when it had to do with uh, surgery, then um, I would forget even my food. Okay, that was <laughs> you were so engrossed. <laughs> engrossed. Mm -hmm. uh, so wh whatever chance I got to learn about surgery, wh whatever I could uh, uh, gain knowledge on surgery, surgical techniques, it was all very uh, interesting. So when I was here in the uh, surgery department in RIMS, mm -hmm. uh, as a house job as well. Uh, this, that was very early on. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was early, just after my internship. Right. Uh, during the internship, we do get uh, lots of exposure uh, to surgery, but not on a uh, uh, on-hand uh, uh, experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but after that, joining house job and uh, doing lots of, uh, uh, assisting lots of surgeries and doing lots of surgeries, it was really fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once I got into post-graduation, uh, then it was a different story altogether. Because then uh, I was able to uh, apply myself uh, practically into the uh, field that I was. I really uh, love from my heart and want to do uh, at any moment, every time. Mm -hmm. So it was. Uh, but in PG, where you specialize? into any specific yeah, surgery yeah, area? It was a general surgery mm -hmm. that uh, we did in post-graduation. And uh, that would inclu include, uh, as a general surgeon, what we uh, do is surgery from head to mm -hmm. toe, yeah. generally, but without any particular specification mm -hmm. or specialization. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, after uh, completing that, I trained myself for uh, laparoscopic surgery. That okay. is keyhole surgery, mm -hmm. then endoscopy, okay. and endourology, so that uh, we could uh, pursue our surgeries 
uh, without making large incisions mm -hmm. all through keyholes and uh, do endoscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. So we were uh, able to set up the first unit here in Manipur, mm -hmm. in Shizia Clinic, and then uh, go on to do video endoscopy and endoscopic procedures and uh, endourology where we used to remove stones from kidneys and other things by small holes. Mm -hmm. So we were able to start all that uh, right on early. In India, keyhole surgery started in uh, 1890, mm -hmm. yeah, 90 it started, and we were able to do it here in 96. Okay. So it was not uh, uh, very far. Not behind. a big lag. Yeah, yeah not mm -hmm. a big lag. And uh, being in laparoscopic surgery, we have been able to do not many things. And I was very fortunate to be associated with Dr. Palin because uh, he is forward looking and uh, we were able to procure so many instruments for the first time even in Asia. Okay. Uh, in so hospitals. all the technology yeah. and instruments, what yeah, we yeah. have here at CJA is in par and exactly. the global uh, yes. level. Yes, and okay. we were in, in able to even lead in some surgical techniques, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, more than other parts of the country. Okay. So that was how it was uh, very fruitful. Okay, uh, that's uh, really nice to hear. Monica, I'm finding the voices. Finding the voices. Finding the voices. Finding the voice. I could see my father. <coughs> who came to me in my headmaster. Because he was a little to pay. I'm sorry. <coughs> Because we need such story for people to have faith in the government and the system that yes, it's working. And Let's bring peace in our home state, people Manipur. Who have got uh, the job without bribery, mm -hmm. they'll do justice to their job and they will help raise the standard of Manipur. or patient, incoming patient from outside of Manipur as well as inside of Manipur? Right from the beginning there was a uh, lack of uh, facilities as a whole in uh, Manipur mm -hmm. and uh, since we developed a situation where we were trying to bring in new technologies in Manipur, mm -hmm. of course it, may, it would have been there in other parts, but uh, new techniques in Manipur and uh, since it was coming for the uh, first time and it was new and uh, it was for the better so uh, patients uh, coming uh, was not much of a problem okay just uh, everybody preferred to have uh, good uh, facilities and good techniques and safe techniques mm -hmm. so uh, developing number of patients uh, was not an issue at all mm -hmm. from outside yes we did get patients uh, from other parts of uh, other states around mm -hmm. and then also from Myanmar okay and uh, even now we do get uh, patients uh, from Myanmar uh, until 2013 and 14 it was uh, much better in the sense that uh, many patients could come and we could arrange uh, ways to bring them here uh, in large numbers mm -hmm. so that uh, we can we could treat them and then send them back again. Okay. But uh, 
uh, in the last uh, two years it has come down a little bit because of a uh, lot of apprehension by the army that uh, for the entry from Myanmar for, for the entry from Myanmar I see the patients are ready to come but it's more the entry problem yes I see so is there any initiative on resolving that there has been we have been discussing that in uh, not many forum and uh, uh, we have discussed this in uh, MEA Ministry of uh, External Affairs we have discussed with the uh, the health department here, we have discussed with the chief minister. They all are aware of the situation. Mm. And, uh, people are waiting for the clearance, clearance uh, mm. the, the visa on arrival uh, facilities and all that to be mm -hmm. happening. So all that is uh, okay. on, the, on the card. Once that becomes uh, easy and better, I think uh, that will happen. Patients, are the, they always keep asking. They, the patients, uh, even from San, San's uh, state of mm -hmm. uh, Myanmar, that is uh, towards the China border. Mm. Uh, there, it is nearly about 750 kilometers from Tamu. Mm -hmm. So patients are coming from there. Mm -hmm. They come here, mm -hmm. and uh, they are getting the facilities uh, here. The other choice is that uh, they have to go either to uh, Thailand, okay, or Singapore, okay. Uh, Bangkok and Singapore that is the uh, other choice and uh, for those people who can uh, who have uh, the ability to go by surface only for those who are going by flight they can definitely go to uh, even Chennai or Delhi like that mm -hmm. uh, Kolkata Delhi Chennai mm -hmm. these are destinations okay uh, from Myanmar okay so but the medical med the medical system in Myanmar as compared to say in Caesar it is much more better in here, Manipur, so they Manipur, would yes, prefer. Manipur is much, much better. Better, yeah. okay. So if you uh, consider the entire Manipur, right? Uh, not only Shija, but mm -hmm. the entire Manipur, uh, the facilities are definitely much better than what is uh, because we have two medical colleges mm. with postgraduate uh, uh, training center. Even Shija Hospital has got postgraduate training center. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a postgraduate training center. So we have three centers which are training postgraduate uh, uh, medical students. Mm -hmm. uh, the entire Myanmar has uh, two medical colleges. Mm -hmm. So the number of uh, doctors and then the number of uh, uh, health uh, facilities are definitely much less and the uh, uh, equipments and uh, uh, all the facilities, all the uh, techniques and technologies are much less. They have not started the uh, entire Sagang division, they have not started uh, keyhole surgery. Okay, so uh, yeah. they haven't caught up with all yes, this technique. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Whereas so in Manipur, almost all the hospitals are doing keyhole surgery. Okay. So that's yeah, not happening. Yeah, that's great to hear. But despite, you know, what you are sharing, which is very good, uh, we still see a lot of uh, people from Manipur going out of Manipur for treatment. Um, what do you, what is your comment on this? H how do you think, like, we can resolve this? Because from where I'm hearing and reading, some people seem to be going out because of, um, lack of faith um, in the institute or the doctors here. Yes. Um, so, what is your comment? Yeah, um, I, I personally feel that uh, it's it's a matter of trust. Mm. So, uh, and also uh, the the concept, the feeling among the people mm -hmm. that uh, if they go to a center which is uh, doing large volumes the expertise will be much better there. Mm. Yes, of course, in a way that is also true. But uh, trust is something that is uh, uh, one major factor here. Um, fortunately, we have a uh, lot of trained people in Manipur, mm -hmm. uh, much, much more than other states of Northeast India, except probably Assam, uh, as compared to Mizoram, Nagaland, and uh, uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya. Mm -hmm. uh, Manipur has a lot many trained specialists and super specialists mm -hmm. in, in the medical field. But uh, I personally feel there's a, a deficit in trust. Yeah, and also I feel that there's a lack of um, exposure in the media of what the hospital does, you know, the good news. Mm -hmm. uh, I do appreciate you know Caesar Hospital because you have a very good presence in the internet and you share you know whenever there is some 
um, good technology coming up or when there is the success story. And I think that's very important because that helps in building up the trust. Um, yeah. It's very much required. Right. So I think if we improve that, um, I think it's already happening that there are so many success story in surgery or in every department. Yes, yes. And if we can expose that more, then people will be like, oh, you know, we don't have to go outside. We already have this. Um, which I think, yeah, that's where like I'm trying to kind of plug in and uh, help a little bit in exposure yeah, uh, amongst our own people. Yeah, that's that's uh, important uh, that uh, people are aware of right. the, uh, what exactly the uh, present situation of uh, healthcare facilities is uh, in different uh, uh, strata or levels, the first year, second year, third year mm -hmm. institutes. What are the actual facilities and uh, what are the actual uh, specializations and abilities? Mm -hmm. And uh, if they are people are more aware, I think uh, they right. are aware of the uh, situation more. And uh, of course, yes, there are some other uh, factors uh, which also causes people to go out is that uh, uh, there are institutes which are recognized by the government mm. for reimbursement for uh, particular uh, okay. illnesses and treatment. Right. We are recognized for a few, like mm. uh, neurosurgery and uh, endoscopic uh, ERCP. Okay. So then uh, it, uh, it is uh, easy for the patients to come because mm. uh, the, the, the financial advantage they get, right. that they, it gets reimbursed. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the f same facilities which are available in uh, Shija hospitals or other hospitals in Manipur, and uh, not recognized for reimbursement, then uh, the patient has no choice, uh, in fact. They have to go to a place where it can be reimbursed and they can get their money back for the treatment that has been incurred, mostly for the government uh, employees and their mm -hmm. wards. So mm -hmm. there's another factor that they go. Okay. Uh, mm, but then we do have it in Manipur, right? It's just a lack of awareness or? Uh, we have those facilities. We right. Uh, let's take uh, one very simple example. Uh, kidney stone removal mm. by keyhole surgery. Mm -hmm. It is available in uh, Shija hospitals and other hospitals also mm. in uh, Manipur. But for that, it is not recognized by the government for, for reimbursing. reimbursing. Oh, so they, then so they the patient, ought to go out. Yeah, the patient, when they are getting treated in Shija hospitals, have to pay from their pocket, mm. which, uh, and the money will not be mm -hmm. reimbursed to them. Okay. But if they go to a center which is outside Manipur, and the government reimburses money for that treatment, mm -hmm. then naturally they, they will go there. Right, right. They will choose that definitely. Right. So that is another situation. I see. But is there any initiative to? We have, uh, in fact, okay. applied uh, to the government to recognize us for uh, this thing. And mm. uh, um, there has been uh, parties up and down mm -hmm. discussing um, particularly the amount of uh, Reimbursement. Other, there was a meeting with all other hospitals, uh, including Shija, with the government, and uh, these uh, topics were discussed. And they are looking into the matter. Okay. So that, uh, okay. that can be. Like uh, in uh, uh, Delhi, for instance, uh, they have a policy that uh, when a patient is treated in a private hospital, they have fixed a rate. Mm. For any illness, mm -hmm. not, not any particular illness, for any illness, uh, in any private hospital, mm -hmm. if they are treated. Uh, people staying in Delhi, mm -hmm. if they are treated in any of the hospitals, uh, they will re reimburse a particular amount that mm -hmm. is fixed for that particular illness. Mm -hmm. So the patient can choose whichever hospital mm -hmm. and uh, they get treated there and uh, the government pays the uh, hospital that amount, okay. fixed amount. Mm -hmm. So if such uh, uh, things uh, happen here, then it will become easier, easier for the for patient. Easier for people as yeah. well as uh, yeah. it will be good for the uh, hospitals exactly. here. And at least the money, it may circulate uh, from the government to the private institute. It may circulate, but it will remain here, mm -hmm. uh, at mm -hmm. least in Manipur. That is the uh, thing that we are looking forward to. Right. I hope it will happen. Right. Yeah. Um, question about the, the other point you made. resources of uh, Manipur being trained. I I think also in other part of India, when I go to other institute, we see a lot of people from Manipur working, um, you know, as a doctor or as a nurse or yes. as any technical staff. Very true. Right. Uh, fortunately, our people are very skilled. Skilled in their hands and uh, uh, skill work, we seem to learn very fast, mm -hmm. very quick and very good. And uh, this has been uh, recognized and realized by people uh, outside also. And uh, uh, especially patient care and critical care and uh, 
uh, ICU care and operation theater techniques, uh, not only our doctors, surgeons, and uh, uh, the upper strata, but all other paramedics, including nurses, they are much better mm. in uh, this uh, this field. Okay. And uh, earlier, when we were in medical college, uh, that was in the early 80s, we used to see a situation where most of the nurses in ICU or in uh, operation theater in most of the major hospitals in India mm -hmm. were from Kerala. Right. Uh, now this uh, situation has changed. Mm -hmm. Most of them are from Manipur. Okay. If you go to any of the Apollos or the, the Medantas or the Medicas or any of these hospitals, uh, the, you will see that uh, when it goes to high-end techniques and uh, technologies, mm -hmm. it is the Manipur people from Manipur who are uh, there in the lead lead teams. They are the team leaders over there. Okay. So it is true. Even if you go to Guwahati, uh, which is uh, nearest to metropolis. Mm -hmm. So even if you go there, in major hospitals there, mm -hmm. the operation theater uh, nurses and uh, uh, technicians, the leaders are all from Manipur. Mm. And there are many of them working there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is very fortunate for us. Right, uh, right. So, I mean, the healthcare team is not only in Manipur, but also in all different parts of India and also abroad. Yes, I would yes, say. yes, yes. Um, so coming back to the technology and infrastructure, I myself, um, I'm in IT, but I am in healthcare IT. Um, and um, in US, that's where I'm working right now, um, all the data are integrated, um, like the patient data um, or even um, the hospitals and clinics, they use um, software like EHR, EMR, um, so just wanted to get a sense of where are we, um, you know, in healthcare IT level. So we started off with uh, computerizing our hospital data and processing uh, quite early. And uh, at present, uh, we are using a software which has uh, all this uh, data collection, everything. Uh, we have uh, total management as well as uh, uh, not only the patient management, the hospital management uh, uh, software. software. As you know, that most of the software uh, people originate from India, mm -hmm. uh, anywhere, right. in a, anywhere <laughs> in the world. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, uh, software developed in Cochin, which okay. developed, and we are using that very well. It's uh, 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 the facilities there are lots of them. Mm. It is our inability to use the entire potential of that uh, software I uh, see. Uh, I see. as of now. That is the only situation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, we have. Uh, uh, high-end uh, software to take okay. care of our patient care, right from entry to discharge and everything. I see. So them. this is more only for Caesar Hospital, but not, you know, it cannot be cross-transferred to other hospitals in Manipur or yeah, other. Yeah, that, that, that system is not. Right. Uh, I think fact, that's entire, where. entire country has no such system right. for uh, tracking uh, patient records. I was telling you about the system in U.S. I was very impressed because everything is centralized. Mm -hmm. And when a doctor would write a prescription, it is all connected not only to the hospital, but also to the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So I can choose like which pharmacy I can go and pick up. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like from that perspective, we are still lagging, but from the hospital software and technology, it is there. Yeah, we, uh, that is the uh, intranet. Mm. We have an intranet uh, which uh, works uh, uh, from uh, all nodes within the hospital are connected and we have that facility mm -hmm. but uh, connecting to the outside uh, as of now it's uh, not done and uh, that is where we are looking forward to the mm, uh, development of IT in India uh, with uh, Digital India coming. Right, and, uh, I think there has to be yeah. a backup from the government. Exactly. Uh, because what I see in US like Obama, like they have a lot of backup and they give incentives to the institute as well as the uh, physician who adopts. And mm. so the adoption rate was really good. Yeah, so I think uh, that is how it has to come. Mm -hmm. They have to uh, show us uh, how we can integrate. And in fact, uh, as a healthcare community as such, we should be able to understand that uh, sharing our knowledge and then data will be good for the entire society as a whole. Right. Um, here there's a, at present, 
what I feel is there, there there's an element of uh, competition uh, amongst the local uh, hospitals and uh, such things, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, that is true for the entire country, mm -hmm. not only for Manipur but for the entire country. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that particular reason, they would uh, try to either mm, hide data or try to keep the data to themselves. Uh, mm. Such things uh, is there as of now. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we learn that. Uh, that sharing this data is useful for the society. I think we should come out of that shell and uh, move forward. Right, and also um, I think uh, the approach is more reactive, like when people get sick, then you go for treatment. Um, again, I'm just sharing what I've learned there. Like I've seen a lot of um, initiative where it's proactive and uh, people mandate vaccinations, checkpoints, and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. collecting it at a level of state and I think those are very good uh, proactive initiative which would also uh, you know help the people yes I, I don't know if such initiatives are very here. true we do we have a, even started uh, this uh, facilities here mm -hmm. uh, to have health checks regular health checks for uh, executives and uh, whoever wants mm. to get an animal health check uh, whether or not they are sick or ill right we have those facilities here uh, separately for uh, gentlemen, gentlemen and then for ladies and mm -hmm. uh, different uh, groups and uh, different age groups and different uh, uh, pa this parameters for testing and uh, investigating and uh, uh, consulting. We have all those things, but the volume is not high because people uh, take right, illness. Right, that's what the people, yeah, I think said, the mindset of the people, like you true. go to the doctor only yes. when you're sick. Yes, that is true. Uh, that. Uh, uh, health is there as long as uh, there's no complaint. Right. Uh, that is what the uh, <laughs> general public yeah, feeling Because is. there, like, uh, when we have our insurance, we have regular checkup, like the annual checkup, and we are mandated to go. Right. Uh, right, right. Because I think that's the way to ensure that you have good health, and, right. um, and of course, it's good for the insurance people also. So <laughs> insurance, I think, uh, we're will be coming, I, we cannot prevent that, and uh, it's a system that is, uh, mm. with, but as of now, I don't think it should, it will be more than uh, four or five percent, or probably less mm -hmm. in uh, Manipur as such, mm -hmm. uh, that insurance take care of, takes care of uh, our health system. Mm -hmm. uh, the government, definitely, uh, the government uh, servants and their wards are taken care of by the government right. for their health care and uh, uh, treatment and all that, but uh, again, uh, that is not in the system where uh, they have uh, annual checks to uh, keep them mm -hmm. uh, aware that they are uh, in good health. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, once that uh, uh, insurance as such comes and uh, then an annual check has to be done, I think uh, that thing will come mm. to increase that. Right, uh, right. Um, so is there any other thing you want to share before we move into the palliative initiative? Yeah, I would uh, like to share more about palliative care, I think. Okay. <laughs> That's what uh, yeah, I'd like to sure. speak about. Yeah, I'm looking uh, forward it's, to it's hearing that. It's my passion, that. and then I want other people to uh, know about palliative care. 